Good afternoon. Um, we're looking at some practical examples of, uh, of questions that involve upper and lower bound. And they are really important um, questions, you can expect them. Um, I'm going to work this question out. I will type the question as an annotation in this video because you see how I write and it's just not going to fit. And I'm also going to show you in this video a typical mistake a lot of students make. Okay, so first I'll do it the proper way, then I'll show you the mistake uh, many of you make. Yeah, so they give me a rectangle and they say, well, the lengths of the rectangle are corrected to the nearest unit. Now, what is the smallest perimeter the rectangle can have? Yeah, so what is the smallest perimeter the rectangle can have? All right, now, if that is my question, then um, what do I have to do? Well, that, they say this is seven centimeters and that is 11 centimeters. Now, first of all, I realize that the perimeter, let me write it down here. The perimeter of a rectangle or any perimeter is, are the, is the sum of the lengths of the outside, eh? the sum of the lengths of the outside, okay? So for a rectangle that is two times the length of this one, yeah, so two times the length of this one plus Two times the length of this one but actually I personally always just do this one plus that one plus that one again plus that one again anyway that's up to you perimeter anyway is the outside um, lower bound now before I start adding anything or before I start calculating the perimeter I have to take the lower bound values of both my lengths so over here I'm gonna write down seven in the middle and I'm just gonna sketch a number line. What is the next number here? Six, and over there it is eight. Because this quick sketch is gonna help me to do this properly. I'm looking at the lower bound. I'm not interested in the upper bound. So what lies exactly between six and seven? Eh? Because it's correct to the nearest unit. So six and seven, what lies exactly between that? So the lower bound there is 6.5. That's right. And I do the same for my other value. Um, so I put 11, 12 on that side, 10. Not interested in the upper bound, but still I just, I just draw it. I always draw it. The uh, lower bound, what lies exactly between 10 and 11? That is 10.5. Okay. Now I'm going to calculate the perimeter with these values. So what is the perimeter? Right? Or the lowest possible perimeter? 6.5 plus 10.5 plus 6.5 plus 10.5, all right? Now, again, some of you will say, well, it is two times 6.5 plus two times 10.5, yeah? Now, of course, that is excellent. Well, I always just add the four, four sides up. If you'd want to do this one times two plus that one times two, that is great. Okay, let's work that out. So two times six and a half, those are 13 units, eh? because it doesn't give any units, centimeters, meters, it doesn't say, so units. And two times 10 and a half are 21 units. So the perimeter then would be 34, yeah? So the lower bound of the perimeter is or are 34 units, okay? Now let's say they will continue and they will now ask, well, what is the highest possible area this rectangle can have, for instance? Yeah? So again, it's corrected to the nearest unit. What is the highest possible area this um, rectangle can have? So highest, we're talking about the upper bound. So what is the upper bound? Well, what lies between seven and the next number eight? That is 7.5. And what lies between 11 and 12? That is 11.5. So the upper bound, if I can just squeeze that into this corner over here, of the area, yeah, where the area of a rectangle is length times height, or whatever you call it, uh, length times width, but um, I call it length times height. And then the upper bound, I have to calculate with these values 7.5 times 11.5. And then you can work that out. So I am not going to work with 7 and 11. I have to work with the upper bound values. 
All right. Now, I'm not going to work it out properly myself. I'm a little bit lazy. I'm going to take my calculator. 7.5 times 11.5 equals, and uh, that is 86, 1 over 4 units squared, units yeah, to the power 2 eh? area. Okay, so that just fits over there. 86 and a quarter anyway. Okay, now I just quickly want to show you the typical mistake uh, students make. So I, I sketch the rectangle here again. And let's say we're still looking for the perimeter and the lower bound perimeter. What do they do? They calculate the perimeter first. So they say, well, the perimeter is 7 plus 11 plus 7 plus 11. Yeah, which is 18 times 2, which is 36. And then they take the lower bound of that answer. So they say, well, the lowest possible perimeter, yeah, considering it's correct to the nearest whole unit, to the nearest whole number, that would be 35.5. But that is wrong, because you do not work with the values given and then of your answer take the lower bound. No, you have to take the lower bound first and then find the perimeter. And that's your answer. So I do nothing with my 34 units here. I do not take the lower bound of that again. No, I do take the lower bound at the beginning and then I work with those values. Yeah, so if I would continue the area, what is the upper bound? Yeah, what's the highest possible area? Some students will do, oh, seven times 11, which is 77. And then they take the upper bound of that, so 77.5, which is wrong, yeah, because you and I realize with upper and lower bound questions, you first, in this case, take the upper bound, 7.5 and 11.5, and, and then you work with those values, 7.5 times 11.5 equals, and that is your answer, and stays your answer, you don't do anything with that anymore. Okay, so 86 and a quarter rather than 77.5 because that is absolutely wrong. Okay, now let's uh, go to another video with another example. I'll see you soon.